And that's the biggest kind of um, knockout punch that I don't think people are expecting. And I think Tesla is probably <clears throat> at least 75% done with this. Dave Lee was just on Farzad's channel and he shared his thoughts about tomorrow's investor day as well as Tesla's feature. He has some pretty strong convictions. Let's take a look. It was pretty good. I've actually been uh, reflecting a bit back on Tesla's history. And I remember back in like 2013 or 14, I was writing some posts on Tesla Motors Club. And the theory was um, Tesla is betting their future on this Gen 3 called it, car, they called it at that time. $35,000 car, like a uh, BMW um, uh, 3 Series competitor. Mm -hmm. And Elon was saying that they could possibly sell like 300 or 500,000 of these cars in 2020. Elon makes a prediction back here. And in 2020, Elon delivers exactly almost 500,000 vehicles. The bears will say Elon completely failed because he did not deliver exactly 500,000 vehicles, right, Gordon? And that uh, people were basically debating whether or not that's possible and all this stuff. And for me, I felt the likelihood was, was super high because the Model S was so much better than anything else out there. They just needed to shrink the car, right, make it more affordable. <clears throat> and my thoughts were already on the next stage, which was Gen 4. And so mm. my thesis or hypothesis back in 2014-ish was Tesla would likely be successful with Model 3 or you know their third gen, and that would set them up for their Gen 4 car. And their Gen 4 car would be this cheap kind of Corolla competitor type of, you know, that, that class and would set them up to become the largest auto manufacturer in the world. The reason why Dave says the next vehicle is going to be generation four, not generation three, which is what Tesla says, is because when you look at Tesla's lineup, Tesla first started with the Roadster, but the Tesla Roadster was based on the Lotus Elise chassis. It was not really made from scratch by Tesla for Tesla. That's why Tesla says the S and the X are built on the first generation Tesla platform and the Model 3 with the Y are built on the second generation platform and then the next vehicle will be built on the generation 3 platform. I look back on that and I got so much um, uh, heat and flack from that because people just <laughs> yes. didn't, they, they thought that the Gen 3 car was, was going to fail. Dave was talking about the Model 3. Even early Model S owners, a lot of them thought that the chance of bankruptcy was quite high and that they would have a car that there would be no company behind it, you know? Yeah. Um, so, and then as we enter into gen, into this tomorrow's announcement, basically what Tesla is saying is they're saying, Hey, we've got this model three model Y, the platform, but that's not enough. And here's our next big platform, our next big push that will take us over the next 10 years, right? of ramping and rollout. And this is the platform that will take us to become the um, highest volume automaker in the world, right? This is the kind of turning point. And Tesla is announcing this tomorrow, right? And they've actually held back a lot of their signs and clues. Like Elon has slipped a little bit talking about their next generation vehicle platform, but generally speaking, they haven't uh, really addressed it, saying what's after Model 3 and Model Y in detail, right? Yeah, Elon is not really giving us much here, although he hinted that perhaps Tesla will announce something about HVAC. He did say before, years ago, that Tesla will eventually get into the HVAC business, but is right now the time. Elon has promised to unveil his master plan three, but nothing really specific. And so tomorrow is, is the next chapter. And this is actually significant because you know, Elon has been talking about the this Model 3 um, platform since like 2013 or 14, and even before that, actually. And so Tesla has been built on the whole, you know, 35000 whatever dollar Model 3, uh, Model Y dream. And that has led us all the way to 2023. And so the question is, okay, what's after this? And so Tesla is um, set up to show us um, and a, a super ambitious plan 
to drop the cost of the car into the next level below, you know, this entry level luxury sedan, which is the Model Three and then the, and then the Model Y, into the more economy class cars. But the 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 Trojan horse I see in this is that Tesla is not an economy car maker. I personally, I love the interior of Teslas, but I do have some friends that prefer BMWs much more or Mercedes for the interior specifically only. And they say that the Tesla interior feels cheap, that it feels like a Toyota, a Honda, but I think maybe it's been a long time since they have actually been in a Toyota? Leave a comment below. How do you feel about Tesla's interiors compared to, you know, BMW, Toyota, Honda, Mercedes? Where does it fit? I think it's somewhere in between there. I think it's certainly above a Toyota. Right. It's as if you had, you know, um, let's say uh, BMW or Mercedes, you know, offer a $20,000 car that was as good as like, you know, almost as good as their, their three series. It's like, there's no competition against a Corolla mm -hmm. versus a Mercedes, but even more so Tesla um, bringing down their cost of their cars into their next category, let's say the 20 to $30,000 category, it's completely unfair because they're dealing with these economy cars that have completely compromised on everything about the car. Right? It's all about costs. If you drive a Corolla, it's like, you can't compare it with, you know, a Model 3 or even even a BMW or Mercedes or whatever entry-level class um, sports sedan. The handling, the speed, the comfort, the suspension, everything is different. And so that's what I think the bigger picture is, is, is I don't think there's any chance um, for these economy IC cars anymore. Like That's what the, the announcement is about tomorrow. Um, it's about the end of the IC economy car, it's not going to go over, go away overnight. It's not like a quick right. thing. It's going to take, you know, many, many years over time. But as Tesla ramps the next generation vehicle platform and they get that sweet spot, you know, 20, 30,000, um, it's like, yeah, it's, um, it's, it's really the, the beginning of it. It's going to get end, weird. I think it's going to get yeah. weird. <laughs> and also the thing is when Toyota makes the Corolla, their profits from that vehicle are in the mid single digits versus the Model 2, according to Pierre Fergu from New Street Research, is going to be about 20%. When your margins are that low for Toyota's Corolla, you can't really innovate that much because you are not making much money from that. So you are more interested in selling more expensive vehicles, which is where your profits are. In other words, your vehicles are not really getting that much better because there's not much incentive to make them better. Everything is just about costs. So if Tesla comes in and actually offers a car that is quite a bit faster, that is better in basically every way that a car can be better, it is going to be game over for a lot of these economy vehicles. I think the the ra rationale is actually how Tesla des designs their cars, where it's not an option to release something mediocre that's like a Corolla. You know? mm -hmm. <laughs> um, that's just not an option. Like Tesla doesn't you know, c consider that. It's got to be a great car. When you think about it, every vehicle that Tesla has released so far has been a spectacular car in its own way. The Roadster, the original one, proved that an electric car can actually be fast. The Model S is the fastest production car ever made, and the Model X is the fastest SUV ever made, and has these crazy doors. And the Model Y, as well as the Model 3, but especially the Model Y, has this beautiful roof even if you sit in the back it feels pretty open i mean i usually don't like sitting in the back in any car but in a model y mm, i don't really mind every vehicle that tesla made so far has been very special in some way um and so what tesla considers a great car is is not an economy typical economy car you know it's it's and that that's the other thing is 
<clears throat> a lot of people thought the Model 3 early back in the day, let's say 2014, 15, they thought that it would be, um, it would, it would be an economy car in, in a sense of its trim and its feel. And I remember I was like, no, Tesla, that's not the strategy here. Tesla's not trying to make an economy car. They're actually going after right this BMW 3 Series market, <clears throat> that entry-level sports sedan market, and it will be a luxury car. And you know there were actually debate early on back in the day. It was like, well, what if um, Tesla services these economy, mod you know, let's say Model 3 cars with in their service centers together with Model S and Xs? It'll be um, a, a, a big downgrade of of reputation you'll have these mm. cheap economy cars next to these luxury SNS and i remember cars, that <laughs> and owners will feel like what's what the heck you know it's like our luxury brand is shot and i think it's a, it's a fundamental misunderstanding of what tesla their approach is it's like no that the three and why it they were meant to be you know luxury cars that's why tesla services sx three and y it doesn't downgrade their brand by having three and y it's because they have standards and Here's the thing is I think this next generation car, <clears throat> it's not going to be this like cheap economy feeling car, right? It's going to mm -hmm. feel like a Tesla. And that's the biggest kind of um, knockout punch that I don't think people are expecting um, mm -hmm. is this is a real Tesla car. It's not like a cheap, you know, separate brand, like a Yaris brand or I don't know, whatever brand, you know, right. that, like yeah, they're not the Rio, making a, the a cheaper Rio. brand. Yeah. It, that's not Tesla's uh, uh, MO. Um, they're going, they're keeping their standards high. And that's why, um, yeah, I don't think anyone in the auto market in the, in terms of OEMs, they're not prepared for this. If Dave is right about this one, then that means the next Tesla is going to be fast. It's going to have all of the infotainment, a big screen, of course, it will handle pretty well because it's a Tesla. Of course, it is going to be safe and probably there will be a nice roof that you can look up through. And of course, it will have Tesla's autopilot. They, I think there's a misunderstanding of what Tesla's about. They think, you know, Tesla's more like, like, like them. They think that Tesla's going to, you know, cheapen the car and make like a Corolla, right? And that's the thing. Tesla's not going to make a Corolla, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes, they will make a luxury car in the twenty dollars to $30,000 price range, but it will be luxury and you can't compare it with anything else, right, in that price range. Yeah. What Dave is saying is it is going to be cheaper, but not feel cheap. Are you confident that they'll actually show this vehicle tomorrow? Or do you think they'll show plans? How, how are you thinking about this? Yeah, I don't know. I don't think it's to their advantage to uh, release the design of the vehicle. I think it's, it's an investor day. And I think if they just show um, their, um, the back end, the infrastructure behind right this car, meaning you have the design of the car, but you've got um, you've got the the design of the factory, right? The machines, the how how it's manufactured and put together, um, <clears throat> and so the the floor space, how much capex it takes. And I think that's what Elon was hinting at in the last couple earnings call, calls. But here's how we did it in terms of the mm. design. They've also later talks about the Osborne effect where when you talk about the new model that the company is working on, the sales of a previous model just fall off a cliff and that is not good for the company. But it appears to me that Dave thinks that Tesla is working on the next generation vehicle. It's just that maybe they will not unveil it tomorrow, but when they do eventually, it will shock everyone. And I think Tesla is probably <clears throat> at least 75% done with this, you know, in terms of the, the whole thing. I would imagine by the end of this year, they'll finish up, um, you know, every all their designs and and um, probably shoot for production maybe second half of next year. That's my guess. Mm. Um, I'd love to find out more details, you know. I personally think for Tesla, it makes the most sense to wait until almost the last second to reveal the next generation vehicle if it's not purely just a robot taxi to prevent the Osborne effect where the sales of your last generation vehicles start falling off a cliff. Unless there is huge differentiation between the Model 3 and the Model Y and between this new generation vehicle. And this is the Tesla stock buying opportunity explained by Elon Musk. My name is Matt Posius. Like and subscribe if you haven't yet. And I will see you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching.